The coronavirus pandemic is having a huge impact on the UK's public finances. We forecast that government borrowing this year will reach £350 billion. That's six times higher than the forecast at the March budget just seven months ago. And it's higher than at any point in the UK's history outside of the two world wars. About two thirds of the increase in borrowing, or £200 billion, is caused by the tax cuts and extra spending introduced to help public services cope with the emergency and to support families and businesses through this difficult time. Some of the biggest parts of this package were the furlough scheme, emergency funding for the NHS and business grants. But government borrowing has also been pushed up by the huge changes that have been hitting the UK economy. Tax revenues are down as many businesses are struggling to turn a profit and more than 700,000 jobs were lost between March and August. Many more people will have seen their earnings cut and the number of people claiming job seekers allowance, universal credit and related benefits has more than doubled over the same period. Even in its most optimistic scenario, the Office for Budget Responsibility estimated that this would push up benefit spending by £17 billion this year. These are huge numbers. But actually, the exact size of the rise in borrowing this year is not all that important for the health of the public finances. What will matter much more is how successfully the economy recovers over the next few years. Most of the support from government is due to end next year, so the big question is how much of the borrowing related to the weak economy will remain, and for how long. Our central forecast is that borrowing in five years will still be above £150 billion compared to the £58 billion forecast before the pandemic. This increase is entirely driven by ongoing weakness in the economy. We have not included any additional spending related to the pandemic that may well be needed. Of course, with the amount of uncertainty over how quickly the economy will recover, not to mention the trajectory of the virus, borrowing could easily turn out to be much higher or much lower. Because the future size of the economy is so important for the public finances, extra spending that would deliver a fuller recovery would be well worth doing, if we are reasonably sure that the investment will pay off by boosting economic growth. The case is especially strong right now because interest rates are at historically low levels, meaning the government can borrow more cheaply than ever before. But that is not the same as saying that the government should tolerate higher levels of borrowing forever. Running high deficits year after year would place government debt on an ever-increasing path. Investors who lend to the UK might start to doubt whether the government was serious about the prudent management of the public finances and start to demand a higher interest rate in return. This situation could also see higher inflation that the Bank of England might struggle to keep in check. So where should the government go from here? For now, its biggest project needs to be boosting the economic recovery. But once the recovery is well underway, the government will need to turn its attention to the hard task of putting debt on a sustainable path. This will be a huge challenge. Say the government raises taxes or cuts spending by enough to compensate for half of the lingering increase in borrowing after the pandemic. These tax rises or spending cuts would amount to £43 billion in today's terms, or just over one-fifth of the consolidation during the austerity of the last decade. Even so, this would leave debt at over 100% of national income over the next 40 years. And this is before considering other long-term pressures on public spending, like population ageing. At the moment, the economy is too weak and the outlook is too uncertain to commit to the precise shape and size of any tax increases or spending cuts. Even the autumn budget of 2021 may be too soon for this. But we should recognise, and the Chancellor should make it clear, that once the economy has been restored to health, higher taxes are all but certain to follow. Visit www.ifs.org.uk slash green budget to find out more about this work.